Hey there, I'm Jerry, a DIY track guy. This is my humble garage. So you've got yourself a used motor ready for your next big project. But how do you know it's a good one? When I engine swapped my Miata, I replaced the precision built, highly praised Mazda motor with a four cylinder Ecotec unit from an 09 Chevy that I purchased from the sketchiest of auto recyclers from a particularly stabby area of my city. To figure out if this was a junkyard gem or simply junk, I performed an engine stand compression test that I learned from watching a Speed Academy video. So let's get right into it and try to be a little less useless. Now it's called an engine stand compression test and for me it was accurate as I had the motor mounted on my engine stand but you could just as easy do it with the motor sitting on a wooden pallet or a spare tire. Just ensure it's generally sitting level, nothing's interfering with the crank and you have clear access to the starter. With the motor sitting pretty, let's get it ready for the compression test as one normally would. Remove the coils and spark plugs and fill some oil into the crankcase. I suppose you could get by with used oil, but I had a few jugs of various leftovers that were enough to fill it. And I also got the working starter motor bolted in place on the block. Now I'm gonna assume that you can rotate the crank freely on your motor, cause if you can't, you've got yourself a bigger problem that you should probably address before doing a compression test. But in terms of supplies, here's what I needed. A fully charged car battery, jumper cables, test leads with alligator clip ends, and of course, a working compression tester. I positioned the battery near the motor and connected the jumper cables. The positive cable, as you'd expect, goes to the power post on the starter, and the negative cable clamps to one of the starter mounting bolts as the starter grounds itself to the block. Jumper cables are perfect for this as they're usually quite beefy and can handle the electrical demands of the starter. It's probably inadvisable to use skinny little 14 gauge wires for this particular application, but you do you. Notice here that this starter has a plug with one wire. That's the starter exciter wire. When it receives 12 volts, the starter motor fires and as simple as that, it does its magic, rotates the crank and turns the motor over. Next up, I got the compression tester screwed into cylinder one and positioned the gauge so I could see it. And I double checked that the spark plugs in the other three cylinders were indeed removed. Otherwise, compressing the air in those chambers could skew the results. Now it was just a matter of touching the test lead to the starter's positive terminal, exciting the exciter. And as long as I held it there, it continuously cranked the motor. Here on the compression tester gauge, I'm happy to see that the needle spikes up and seven or eight cranks later, I take note of the peak reading. I took three readings and averaged them to get the final compression number for this cylinder. Then I repeated the procedure for each of the other three. And this is when I noticed the numbers seemed quite low and inconsistent across all the cylinders, which is usually not a good sign. But I wasn't done yet. Now that I had a set of dry compression numbers, I proceeded to do a wet compression test. That involved dribbling in a tablespoon or so of oil into the cylinder being tested and repeating the compression test. The idea here was to allow the oil to provide an additional piston seal. And if I saw the numbers jump up dramatically from the dry test, especially for the low reading cylinders, it could indicate poor piston ring seals. And after repeating the wet test on each cylinder, I got these kind of confusing numbers. Consulting the internet, it's seems like good dry numbers should be in the 170 to 180 PSI range, but mine were way lower and the wet numbers really jumped up. And to be honest, it had me quite concerned. Now it goes without saying that doing a compression test on an engine stand is less than ideal conditions for a motor to make optimal cylinder pressure. The standard procedure for a normal engine in car compression test would be to actually drive the vehicle and allow it to reach its proper operating temperature so that the block, pistons, rings, and everything else can thermally expand and provide the best seal possible. Obviously, I couldn't easily do that with the motor sitting essentially stone cold in the corner of my garage. But let's say that you just did an engine stand compression test on your used motor and achieved similarly underwhelming results like I did. Well, you might be interested in the next bit then. My friend Matt graciously gave me a can of Clean Flow Combustion Chamber Cleaner, instructed me to spray a good amount down each cylinder and let it sit for a week or more. 
This stuff is known to be pretty great at breaking down carbon deposits, so I actually treated each cylinder a couple of times. After a long waiting period, I noticed when I shined a flashlight down each cylinder, it revealed a nice shiny piston surface, so I assumed it was doing something good in there. Next, once I got the car running, I also added a bottle of Liquamoly engine flush into fresh oil, ran it for about 30 minutes, and did another oil change right away. This was more to address the overall carbon buildup in the motor, but it certainly couldn't have hurt with the carbon I suspect was gunking up the piston rings. And thankfully, the happy ending of this story was that after driving the car and running another compression test, this time with the car at proper operating temperature, I'm pleased to report that the numbers were fantastic, right where they should be and consistent across all four cylinders. Finally, it's worth mentioning that a compression test is just one way to determine the health of your used motor while sitting on your engine stand. If you have the tools, you could do a leak down test to gauge the condition of your valve seals, or maybe a boroscope to investigate the physical state of your pistons. But I'm really interested in hearing from you what other tests or procedures you do on your used motors before they go into your project car. Please drop those ideas in the comments below. If you found any of this helpful, please like, subscribe, comment, bell, and share the video with your friends. Or if you're feeling particularly cool, you can buy me a coffee, check the link in the description. Until next time, you're awesome, I'm useless, thanks for watching.